Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I've got another of the Distress Oxide layering tutorials for you and we're going to be looking at a lovely light blue tumbled glass. Now this is the second in the series and there will be many, many others. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and you find the playlist. We've already worked with abandoned coral and had a play with mixing lots of colours. Now in these videos I am layering Distress Oxides. This doesn't work with inks and I do explain in that very first video why it doesn't work with inks. Um, but you'll see the effect that we get when we start blending. We are actually creating brand new Distress Oxide colours. Um, you can name them what you like. I'm going to mix them and then compare them to the uh, original colours in the range. And then I'm also going to give you two shades that you can create that are very similar to already created shades. So maybe you don't want to particularly buy that colour, but you want to be able to create it as a one-off. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Now the guide sheet that we're going to be filling in with these blends is available for you to download and fill in as well at home if you'd like to keep a track of all the colours that we are creating. So like I say, we're going to be working with tumbled glass today. This is a lovely pale blue. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down some tumbled glass for our first swatch. Now all of these colours are going to be quite pale, I haven't layered anything too dramatic or dark with it because I think that would just overpower the colour, so it's something you need to bear in mind when you are creating new shades. Now I think there's going to be absolutely hundreds and thousands of new colours that we can be creating by using this technique. If you saw the last video let me know in the comments what you thought of it and I'd love to have you along for this journey and see how many colours we can find. So I'm going to be layering first of all scattered straw over the top of this one. Now it makes sense that a blue and a yellow will create a green, but what sort of green will it be? So the first thing I'm going to do is take the yellow and go over the top of the blue. So because the pigment in the oxide sits on top of the paper, it doesn't soak in, we've got plenty of time to do some blending of these two. And what we've achieved there is this beautiful soft green. Now when we come to the greens that we've got within the Distress range, let's see how this compares. So looking at Bundled Sage, it's actually lighter and brighter than Bundled Sage. It's almost as if it Bundled Sage has a hint of brown in there. So as we work our way up through the other greens, I can't see anything else that is quite the same. Next we're going to be going with a slightly darker shade, but we're going to be going with Festive Berries. So again I'm going to lay down my blue and I kind of very often do a sandwich. So I will do uh, one colour, then a middle colour and then I'll go back over the top with the first colour again and this gives us a really nice mix. Now very often I've found it doesn't matter which order I place my colours, I tend to have the same results once everything's blended in properly. So there's my blue down and next festive berries over the top. Because it's a strong colour I'm not going to use too much on my brush. And I would expect to kind of get maybe um, a purple hint to this colour because of course we're going red and blue. So let's see. Now if you are working at this technique I'd suggest you uh, have everything together, all your supplies together and work reasonably quickly because what we find is once the dye has soaked in the pigment starts to dry and you don't get quite as long then to finish playing at mixing the colours together but as you can see we have got a stunning kind of very soft red there almost a soft purple or mauve colour. So far we've actually found we've created a lot of purples or mauve colours uh, which is great because it's definitely a shade that we don't already have in the Distress range. Now this shade has a bit of a pink tone to it, let's have a look at the purples. Um, it's almost a darker version of Victoria Velvet, but certainly not as dark as Seedless Preserves. Again, it's got a warmer tone than the rest of the purples there. Let's take a look at the pinks too, just in case there's anything there that's similar. And going through, there we can definitely see it's then on the cooler side. So again, another colour that really doesn't have anything similar in it in the range. Now with tumble glass laid down a third time, we're going to add this time bundled sage to it. 
So let's see how this turns out. So bundled sage is again a pale colour similar to uh, tumbled glass in that it's not a strong, strong colour. And I feel with this one that we need to sort of sandwich the blue and the green together. So I put blue down first, I'm putting green down on top and I'm probably going to go back over. But you can see straight away that that is already giving us a kind of darker version of the blues and greens. So just using what's on my brush for now to see what we come up with. That is a really lovely colour. Now these are always easier to see when I cut them out and I actually put them on the sheet which I'll show you at the end. But this is a nice soft green blue. It's kind of cracked pistachio but milder so not quite as bright and if I show you what I mean there I think it's it's definitely a lighter version of Cracked Pistachio. Um, Salvage Patina has more blue in it. Um, I don't think there's anything on the green side that's similar either. It's a, definitely a lighter version of Evergreen Bow as well. So we've kind of made a teal there or a turquoise teal colour or a green that is lighter than anything else we've got already. Next, I'm mixing into Milled Lavender. Now, knowing Milled Lavender is a purple um, and this is a blue which makes purple, I'm expecting a different shade of purple, um, to be honest. I don't test these out too much um, before I do the video, so I do get some surprises along the way. Now, again, Milled Lavender is ever such a pale colour, so I'm going to try and lay down a really heavy layer of this. And then I'm probably going to go back over with a little bit more tumbled glass to sandwich between the two. And you know what? We have got a lovely blue purple colour here. It kind of reminds me of a hydrangea colour. It's not as bright as tumbled glass. It's certainly nowhere near as purple as milled lavender. Let's have a look at our chart and see where this one is now sitting. So let's take a look at the blues first of all. Uh, see, once we bring the, they're the purples actually, once we bring the blues over, we can see how soft that colour really is. Now, this is tumble glass. You can see how that has really dulled that down, giving us, I would have said more of a stormy sky look, but much, much paler. Now, there's nothing that side. Let's just take a look at the purples. When you put it against milled lavender there, you can see how we've got this bluer tone. And a shaded lilac, I always think, has a little bit of a blue tone. But again, much paler uh, and more blue. I, I want to call this colour something to do with hydrangea, because uh, maybe blue hydrangea, because that is similar to what it is. So um, oh, it reminds me of a hydrangea. Can you see how these shades that we're creating are actually nice and soft? And I guess that's down to the fact that tumble glass is a nice pale colour. Right, one more, and I'm going to be mixing tumbled glass this time with the brighter carved pumpkin. So let's lay the tumbled glass down first. And this way I'm going to do um, a, quite a lot of the blue down, make sure there's a good thick layer because of how strong carved pumpkin is. So I'm just going to put a touch of carved pumpkin down to start with because, like I say, it is a very strong colour. Now, if we're thinking that perhaps uh, orange is similar to a yellow or has a lot of yellow in it, and in that case, maybe the yellow and the blue together will make another green, we shall see. I think that's where my thought process would go. So let's again put some more blue down on top and see what sort of green do we have here. Okay, interesting. This is a little like maybe a bit like a uh, crushed olive so let's see if that is very similar or actually once you put them together sometimes you find they're not similar at all isn't it strange we get that color with the orange in it so let me see so um crushed olive oh no so crushed olive is much more of a yellow peeled paint is darker shabby shutters is paler um, again, bundled sage is not as bright, doesn't have as much of the yellow tone in it. Again, uh, bundled sage there looks a bit, as we said here, almost like it's got that tiny drop of brown in it or grey. So again, another green that is lighter than this shade, as you can see, and that was these two 
colours here and here. So you can see how mixing these colours you really can get a plethora of different shades. Now I'm going to uh, cut these out and I'm going to put these onto my sheet here. So there we have the five new shades that we've created on the chart. You can download this chart from my blog that is listed down below as you can the colour chart here if you'd like to print that off and fill that in with the colours that you already have. Now two other colours that I found I mixed and they created colours that are already within the range or very very similar were Seedless Preserves with Tumble Glass, it's kind of made a wilted violet, very very similar as you can see, and Tea Dye with Tumbled Glass made what was very similar to Bundled Sage. Now I still like to keep these on the chart just to remind me if for any reason my Bundled Sage has run out I know that I can recreate that colour by mixing and layering the oxides instead. So I hope you've enjoyed this video again, it's given you lots of inspiration to get playing with your colour and with your oxide inks. Don't forget, like I say, to ensure that you are subscribed to my channel and you check out the playlist for the previous video, I'll be uploading one of these every week. Now next week we're definitely going to go with something a bit bolder and brighter, so keep an eye out for that. Take care everybody, I'll see you again very soon.